In today's tutorial we're going to learn how to do the twist. It's a great free hat pattern available by Yarnspirations.com and today we're going to learn how to do it together. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to learn how to do the twist and this is without the pom pom on top. Uh, the pattern does show uh, pom pom and you can do that if you wish. And this is a great uh, pattern for using back posts and front posts double crochets in order to create the twist. And so you'll notice that the, the it pops out towards you and then it jets back down and then it comes up again. It looks like a lightning rod. So when you go to look at the pattern just like this you see that it pops out and then it comes over and then it jets back up. This is really quite an interesting and really quite an easy pattern to work with. Now also what I did is that I made some diagrams in order to help me. So you can see this here in the highlighting has been uh, done on front post double crochet and the rest of it is back post double crochet and I did it for the complete pattern and I'm going to provide this information on the crochetcrowd.com underneath this article and this is what it looks like here. Uh, in order to kind of create it and it's really a very very easy pattern to be able to follow. So without further ado I'm going to be substituting my yarn today and I'm using a, a Bernat Super Value yarn instead of a Karen Simply Soft. Um, it's I find it's a uh, it's great yarn to work with and of course you can substitute your yarns as long as your hook matches and uh, the matches the yarn. So um, the Karen Simply Soft line has a lot of great uh, colors available to you and so you may want to do that one or the Bernat Super Value depending on whatever you have access to. So without further ado let's uh, start uh, dis uh, discovering this pattern and looking at the brim first. To start with we need to create the brim and the brim has to be 18 inches in length and because of the way that we are crocheting this is that it is doing the slip stitching. It has a lot of elasticity to it and it will really uh, form to the head beautifully when you're wearing it and it's the same on both sides. It looks like it's knitting but it's actually done in crochet. So I'm going to show you how to do this and then we'll come back and then I will carry on. So let's begin to work on the brim together and I want you to create a slip knot and I want you to use your hook. It's a five millimeter size H crochet hook and insert the hook into the slip knot. What we need to do to start is that we need to chain 13 and we're gonna do so. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12 and 13 and you're going to say to yourself oh my goodness that's a huge brim but watch this is what 13 looks like. It's going to compact itself so don't be uh, all uh, uh, panicky yet. So what we want to do is turn the chain around and we want to get the uh, from the second chain and we'll just get the back loop only and just start slip stitching. So pull through and through. Be relaxed about this. Slip stitching can be very tight if you allow it to be. So just kind of glide your hook in yarn over, have no tension coming from the ball and you will have success each and every time. So this is kind of easy but each one of the rows going forward now until you get to 18 inches long will all be slip stitching in the back loop only and I'll explain that in, in just a moment. So let me just get to the end of this row. The key trick to making these brims is making sure you're not going to grab any extra plies uh, when you're going to do it. So making sure that you're, see how I just kind of dropped one there? Just make sure that you got all of your plies in there. Um, it's not hard um, to make sure you got all your plies but um, if you accidentally get too many or you drop one it's very noticeable in this particular design. So you'll notice that the brim just kind of compacted itself down uh, for the length of it and you're just gonna continue. Okay, so you can see this is what it looks like. So let's uh, show you how to carry on in doing the back loop for the slip stitching. So at this point we see that our stitches across and let me just pull out the hook. W if you're a new crochet, when you have two strands and your hook goes behind them that is considered one stitch. If you are looking at the stitch closest to you, the one strand closest to you, that's the front loop and the one being behind is the back loop. So the trick to this is once you get to the end it's how you turn it. So you don't want to turn it like this. Okay? For this particular project you want to continue and just kind of just chain up one and just kind of come in sideways to the first one like this and slip stitch and then just kind of manipulate it in your hand. It's the easiest way to get started. So you're just going to continue and go into the back loop only. Every one you do. 
That's all this is. Now because this is gonna take you about an hour and a half to do the this particular brim of 18 inches. So just put on a pot of coffee and a good movie and just uh, relax and just kind of do the slip stitching. Um, it is well worth the time. The The way that this looks in the final project is really, it really truly is. So it's just a matter of getting used to it um, in order to make these kind of brims. There's a lot of hats with these kind of brims and because of that if you can just practice, uh, practice makes perfect. And so you're just gonna slip stitch yourself across. Now I'm going a little bit slower than I normally would um, if, if I was watching TV uh, but I wanna slow it down for you so you can completely understand. So the trick is, is how you turn it after you're done each and every row and I'm gonna show you that once again. Like so and here's the last one. So the trick is, is that you gotta make sure and uh, that you're always getting into the back loop only and you gotta make sure once in a while that you still only have 12. So there, remember that we chain 13. Well because we went second chain from the hook there's only 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. If there is ever any, you go to 11 you're gonna notice it. If you go more and you add one by accident you're gonna notice it. So you wanna keep just a count once in a while to make sure that you stay balanced. So when you go to turn it, uh, just don't turn it this way. Turn it f forward towards you. Keep it to the side, chain one and just go into the back post like this and then you can kind of officially turn it from that point. Okay, it's all in that first turn on how it you, how difficult it's gonna be for you and if you do it that way then it becomes a no-brainer and then you'll have a perfect uh, brim going forward. So your goal now is to get this to be 18 inches long and uh, when I come back I'll have that done for you and I'll show you how some tips um, for being able to fasten that off and also give you some tips if you would prefer to um, sew it as well. That's up to you. It doesn't really matter each each way you do it because I'm just gonna give you advice on if you're gonna sew it or if you're going to just carry on with the same yarn strand. And uh, I'll join you back here after we have 18 inches done. So I have my 18 inches done and I'm gonna show you two ways. Now this is the five star beanie and it's an amazing hat and I noticed in here in the brim that I did not get a great seam line and that's just because of my own stupidity I think. So what we have to do, you have to, you can do it two, one or two ways. You can do it as it suggests in the pattern and all you just need to do is that you need to turn your work and you, you just need to join your work. So just kinda turn it and put it together like so and all you're just gonna do is that you're going to slip stitch. So you're gonna chain one first. Okay, you go into the back loop only like you normally would. Okay. Of uh, this one. And what we want to do is that we wanna go into the foundation row of the start over here. Okay, and I'm gonna go in the back loop of that one over there. And you can do that all the way across. So you just have to make sure you go in the back loop of the next one on the one side and the back loop on the next one on the other side. Like so. And what this will do is it'll join it together. Now if you prefer to, to be like me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into a, a darning needle instead and I'm going to sew mine closed. And I think I can do a better job because I think um, the other one I wasn't quite happy with my own work. And you don't have to do it this way. You, don't, you can do it the way that the designer is asking you to do. E again it's your own personal preference. So what I want to do is I wanna feed the darning needle through the, the loop to lock it. And just very carefully I'm just gonna go into one of the strands and one of the strands on the other side. And I want to be able to kind of maintain this pattern here. And I just want to sew everything nice and shut together. So just going into one strand on this side, I'm going into both of the foundation strands on the other side. And I think I can get a better seam doing this. So again this is a kind of a personal choice that's up to you and when we come back after I get this done is that I'm gonna start uh, showing you the process of being able to um, start all of the twisting action and it's a really a lot of fun. And if you have better ways of, of sewing things together by all means. So yeah. So see I can I'll also I can already tell it's gonna be a better seam line and maybe I'm just better with a 
a darn needle than I am a crochet hook who knows. Okay so I get that done and when we come back I'll uh, begin doing the step by step on doing all of the the body of the hat next. When I get it all the way across all I'm just gonna do is that I'm just gonna tie it in a little bit of a knot. Okay and just ram it through and just nicely and then I wanna run it down the seam one direction. and then just choose a different point of entry going back in the other direction and then just choose a different point of entry again and go in another direction like so. Okay and that and then I can just actually cut it right off at the, at the area. So I'm more happier with this seam line than I am with the other one that I did. Now this is the starting one here so what I'm just gonna do is that I'm gonna hide this. Now what I have seen done in the other hat tutorial is that people were actually doing a single crochet around the base of the of the bottom of the brim when when you're wearing it it's like the closest to your forehead. So we just want to just hide this in just some strands. So I'll just kind of pull it like that. I think I just pulled that a little too tight. And therefore I'm good to go. So now I'm ready. And that looks a lot better than it did in the original. And I'm good to go. So let's uh, begin the next part of this tutorial. We're now going to begin doing the top area. So the brim is done and now we're gonna do all this twisting work and I went through with a highlighter and I highlighted all the steps that I need to do in order to do it. There's a total of 18 rounds in this uh, two page pattern. Okay and you can see what those are. Very easy to kind of follow um, and it is easy to follow if you take step by step. So what I've done here is that this here is the starting of round number one and what we need to do is that we need to get round number one to be perfect before we can even think about doing any of the other um, 17 rounds that we have and I just did this. I'm gonna provide a scan of this on my website and uh, this is what it looks like here. So if you put it on top of each other I know the scale is a little off here because of I was kind of rushing um, but the hat literally will come up and then do a twist and then start up again. And these X's mean that I the stitches will be missing because what's gonna happen starting in round number 12 we're gonna start removing out stitches so that we can come to the very top of the hat. So this is gonna be like the crown coming into the top. So we're gonna start off down here. So the trick is for this particular hat is that we need to get 17 double crochets in around the top of this brim. Now you're going to notice that you probably will not uh, get 70 stitches equally all the way around. So some of these you have to put in two. What is the magic answer for that? Not sure. You just have to physically put in 70. So on the other hat tutorial that I did right here is that some of the um, ones here have two uh, crochets in them and some just have one. So I just kind of alternated every now and then to make sure that I could get my 70 into position so that I can keep the next part of the pattern uh, being consistent. So all we're just gonna do in the next part of this is do double crochets all the way around starting at the back seam line and then work our way around the front and let me show you how to get started. So let's grab our yarn and if you did the sewing technique you got to fasten on and if you just followed the slip stitching technique that they did you'll already be right where you should be. So the first stitch in or the first chaining of three in all of the rounds complete for this whole thing right to the top never counts as any of the stitches. It's more of a builder but it's not actually a physically a stitch. So we're going to just join on this yarn. So we're just gonna join and chain three. So chaining a three in this whole thing never counts as a stitch any way, any, any way around. So what we have to do is that we have to equally space 70 double crochets into something. So when you're going all the way around make sure you get at least two strands of string on top that is in this brim. If you only get one it will look like it will separate from it. And every once in a while you have to put in two double crochets into the same spot area because you have to get a total of 70. The trick to this whole thing is that it has to remain in groups of 10 in order to work. So I'm gonna put an extra one in this one here and what I'm gonna do is start counting. So the first one chaining three never counts as one. So one, two, three and then four and five, 
six. I'm gonna put another one there for six, seven, and then eight, nine. I'm just gonna stop at ten, nine and 10. So all I'm just gonna do is continue all the way around. You may need to frog out if you if you got all the way back and you don't have your 70 and if you are, are ending too soon that means that you're gonna you've uh, put too many in somewhere so you just gotta frog it out and make sure you get your 70. Okay so this is the only really hard part of this whole thing is making sure you start off with your 70. So I'm coming all, all the way back around just for the record and to keep myself honest with you. It took me two times to actually try this to equally space out 70 double crochets around the top. The first time I was way too short and so I realized I was adding uh, too many stitches in and so I just had to let it relax a little bit more. So when you get to the all the way to the end just join it with the slip stitch and then we're beginning to then move up to round number two and this is where all the action starts for doing the twist. So you're going to notice in this is that we're going to start doing front post double crochets to start with and you'll see that the front post double crochets start growing up on an angle like this and it goes straight up and then it starts going on an angle and when I look at the the diagram that I did over here you can see that here's the front post double crochet all in highlighted and it's popping out. These all are back post double crochet that are sunken down and you'll see that it goes straight up and then it starts going to the side. So I'm going to be following these instructions. Remember this is available on my website for this article. The link is in the more information of this video if you wish to have this. So it's gonna start off with one front post double crochet and then there's gonna be nine back post double crochet. The repeat pattern is in sets of 10. So when we had a group of 70 all together there's seven repeat patterns all the way around. So this is kind of a repeat pattern right here. I did it on the other side here so I could physically see what was going on as well. So this if you did the repeat pattern and this was extended more you'd see that this comes down on an angle just like it would over here. So let's uh, begin uh, round number two and let's start the fun action with this project. So in round number two in all of the rest of the rounds remember that the chaining three that we start with never counts as a stitch. So you see it right here that's never included in anything. So just it's like a builder but it's there but it's not. So just uh, don't ever include that. So we're gonna start off by chaining three and again that does not count as uh as any of the stitches. We immediately come into the very first stitch here and this first one is gonna be a front post double crochet. So we wrap the hook in through the front side of the post coming down on the other side of the post and double crochet. And the other nine of the repeat pattern is all gonna be back post. So we wrap the hook coming from behind the material and then pop that post back out and then double crochet. There are other videos on how to back post and front post double crochet if this is not catching on. So we wrap the hook coming from the back in between the post pushing it back out and you're doing nine in a row of these. So the repeat pattern on this whole thing uh, for this round is that the first one is a front post double crochet. The rest of the nine are going to be back post double crochet and then you repeat again. So the first one is a front post double crochet and the, and the next nine are then our back posts. And you're gonna do that all the way around on this particular round. So let me just get my bearings straight. So I got my first one in and then one, two, three, four, five, six. This is number seven for back post, number eight and nine. Okay, so there is my nine for the back post and now we do the repeat pattern again. So the next one is a front post double crochet for the repeat and the next nine are back posts. Continue to do that same repeat all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around so there should be nine back post double crochets before you hit this um, the join. So here we go. So I got four in so far and I'm doing back post double crochet. So five. So if your counts are right everything should work out for you at this time. Just this is kind of like the establishing road to get things started. So I do double uh, check just to make sure um, I'm got it right. So let me count the back post double crochet. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That means that it's right and then I just join it to the beginning um, that we have here. So we begin it to the join to the first back post double crochet. So don't join it to the chain three. That's just a builder. If you join it to the chain three it becomes very obvious. So that uh, concludes round number two. So we can kind of see what's happening here is that we can kind of see it starting and let's begin row number three. 
Let's begin round number three. We're gonna start off with chaining a three. So one, two, and three. Now this time the first two are gonna be front post double crochet but we only see one so far. So these, uh, the next one is then gonna join this one here. So the first one is gonna be a front post double crochet and then the next one also. So we're gonna come in and grab it from the front side to convert that over and then the next eight are going to be um, back post double crochet. Now here's the trick to this whole thing is that this here is the start of the repeat pattern. So this one plus the next one will be a front post uh, double crochet. So it kind of really gives you an indication of what you need to do for this entire round. So the first two of the repeats are gonna be front post double crochet. The rest are back post double crochet until you get to the repeat that you see here. Please do that all the way around. I'll meet you back here in just a moment. We'll finalize this round off together. Just before I get all the way back around I just wanna clarify. So the first one here is the front post double crochet so we just match it when we get to the repeat and then the next one is also a front post double crochet. Okay, do you get that? So you're gonna notice that this area here in the back post is gonna start decreasing and this front post is gonna start increasing in size uh, just of the visual look. Okay, so just I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Sorry about that, I just wanna make sure I was clear. I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just simply just doing my back post double crochets until I hit that join part once again. And I do wanna verify my count before I just uh, completely finish this round and verify it in this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I should have only eight this time, which I do. And then I just join it to the top of the beginning front post double crochet. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna move up. So in row number three, or num number four, sorry, we're going to uh, do something even more cooler. In row number four, we're gonna start by chaining three. Now this time we're gonna add another one here. So there's gonna be now three front post double crochets in a row. So we're gonna get the first two that are already there and the next one that's a back post. So we're gonna pull it forward this time. So this time it's going to be three in a row and then the remainder in this section will be back uh, posts. So the next seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're at the repeat again. So when you can tell because the front posts are there. So again the first three are going to be front post double crochets. So the two you can already see and the third one you're just gonna make that one up now. So continue to do that same pattern and going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around and the final seven will be back post double crochets to keep it in balance. And that's just following the repeat pattern so there's no extra stitch work required in order to get that number. So everything is in sets of ten. And there's some tricks to this pattern but it's not, I'm not available, I'm not ready to share those with you yet. I might as well show you at the time it's happening. Once you get all the way uh, back around which I am now just join it to the beginning front post double crochet and that concludes off that round. So you can see that this front post is starting to really gather and the back posts are starting to narrow down just like it does in the pattern. Let's begin round number five when we're gonna start off by chaining a three. And this time in round number five there's gonna be four front post double crochets followed by six back post double crochets. So we're gonna add an additional front post double crochet this time. So the first three are already there and then the next one is just gonna pull from the back and there's your four right there. Remember that chain three does not count as anything and now the other six that are remaining are still going to be back post double crochet. So then you're just gonna get to the repeat pattern again. So the first four are, are front post double crochet and the remainder of the repeat are going to be back post until you get to the next one. And uh, this is pretty simple so far. I'm not really having to hurt any brain cells yet and I don't think there is any brain cells to hurt in this pattern. Actually it looks a lot more complicated than it is. So here's the repeat pattern. So the first four are going to be front post double crochet again. So the first three are already visible to you. The next one is just a matter of pulling it up forward and then the remainder are back post double crochet until the next repeat. Please do that all the way around for round number five. When you get all the way back around just a, a slip stitch again to the very first front post double crochet. 
So we're gonna start off the next round, round number uh, six and this is when uh, I'm gonna share you in the tip with you that I said I was going to and I was gonna wait. So here we go. So let's begin round number six. We're gonna chain three first and the first five this time are gonna be uh, front post double crochets. Okay, front post double crochet and there will be five in a row. So there, there you have your, the four there and this is five and then the remainder five are gonna be back post double crochet. So this is the neat thing about this is that my tip for you is that at any point now in the remainder of this hat there will never be more than five front post double crochets uh, in a row. And if you can understand that that will help you then for row number, uh, round number seven that we're gonna start in a moment after we get this done because it'll help you because what's gonna happen at this point is that we've been going up straight on a straight line but in round number seven we're gonna start then jetting outward in, in another direction uh, in order to keep it. So if you can understand that only five ever stay in a row uh, it makes a lot of sense. So here's the repeat pattern and five front post double crochets are gonna be in a row this time again it's a repeat pattern. So this is your fifth one and then the remainder is gonna be back post double crochet until you get to the next one. So please do that all the way around. This is round number six. So I'm finishing up round number six and just joining it to the first front post double crochet. So let's start off round number seven and round number seven is going to be a little bit of a game changer and let's see what happens in this round. In round number seven what's gonna happen now is that the flat edge that you see here is going to start then going outward so it's gonna be coming out like this. So this one's still gonna stay coming out on an angle and this one is going to start on an angle. So let's uh, begin round number seven and we're going to chain three. Remember it doesn't count as a double crochet. So the very first one this time is going to be a back post double crochet. So we're no longer doing the, starting with the front post this time. And the next five are going to be front post double crochet in order to keep it in balance. So one, two, three, four and this one is a back but it's gonna turn into a front this time. So there's my five in a row and then the remainder of, of the next five are going to be back post double crochets. Okay so this is the next one. Uh, five are gonna be back post. So one, two, three, four, and five and the fifth one is actually the start of the first front post this time but it is changing to a back post this time and now the next five are going to be front post again. So in this whole round we just have to start off the first one with being a back post and then the next five are front post, the next five are back post, the next front posts are, are going to be five. So it's, it's just a matter of just shifting over one and keep it in sets of five. So five front post, five back post, five front post, five back post all the way around. When we come all the way around because there is one back post here you'll end up with just four over here in order to keep it in balance. So uh, do that all the way around and I'll see you back here and this is round number seven. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I do have four back post double crochets left in this thing and that's the right count because there's, there's only a total of five back post double crochets in a row but we started off with doing a back post double crochet so the fifth one is on the other side of the slip stitch. Okay so there's your four, here's your fifth over here. Let's just join uh, to the top of the beginning back post double crochet to finalize off round number seven. So you can see that it's starting to jet over toward the side. Let's move on to round number eight. Round number eight is very similar. So this time we're going to have five front post double crochets in a row and five back post and double crochets in a row. The trick to this round is that we need to start off and this time we're gonna chain three, one, two and three and then the first two this time are gonna be back post double crochets. Okay, so the first two are back post double crochets and now we then begin the repeat pattern. So it's gonna be five front post double crochets. So one, two, three, four and the next one is actually a back post that you see here. It's gonna pull forward for five and then the next five are gonna be back post double crochets. So this is gonna cause that, um, that lightning bolt kind of idea, the twist to look like it's still twisting because we're just shifting over by one stitch. Okay so we're gonna have, there's four. The fifth is going to be the first front post double crochet of the, of the last round 
and then you can carry on. So now five front post double crochet, five back post double crochet and continue to do that. And you can start to physically see that it's starting to come up on an angle. Finishing up round number eight and I will have three back post double crochets in a row and that makes sense because there, we started off with two when we started this round. So the other two are on the other side of the slip stitch. So just join to the beginning back post double crochet. Okay, so you can actually start really starting to see this come together nicely. Let's move on to round number nine next. Round number nine, same thing as eight. So chaining up three. Now this time is that we are going to then put in three back post double crochets to start instead of two. So three, so one, two and the other one is a front post at this time but it's gonna pull backward. So now it's a back post. So there's three and now the next five are gonna be front posts. So one, two, three and four and five and now the next five are gonna be back posts. So let's do that. So one, so it's the same thing that you already know is that it's gonna be five front post double crochets and then five back post double crochets just like it has been. It's just we're shifting over y by one. So there's four now there and this is the fifth. So that one's gonna pull that one back and then you carry on. So the next five are gonna be front posts and you can see it's really coming out pretty cool. So let's uh, keep moving. This is round number nine. Finishing up round number nine, you're only left with two back post double crochets this time around and that makes sense because we started off with three on the other side of the slip stitch. So this concludes off round number nine. Just join it to the beginning top of the back post double crochet. Let's move on to round number ten. Round number ten is the final round of going up on an angle like this before we do something drastic and let's uh, cover round number ten before we do the drastic move after that. Let's begin round number 10. So we're gonna chain up three. This time instead of doing three back post uh, double crochets in a row, it's gonna be four and we're gonna carry on in the same fashion where we keep it in five and five. So this time it's four in a row for back post double crochet. Okay and then the next five are gonna be front post double crochets. So we can see that we just shifted over one. So one, two, three, four and five and then we just have to shift over again so then the next five are gonna be back post double crochets. Okay, so carry on in that same fashion all the way around. So five front post double crochets, five back post double crochets and then we'll join out the slip stitch and then we're gonna do something uh, game changer in round number eleven and that's gonna change the story from this point going forward. Let's finish up round number 10 together and the last stitch is going to be a back post double crochet in order to keep it in that balance of the, of what we've been doing because the other four are on the other side of the slip stitch and let's just join it to the uh, top of the beginning back post double crochet. So let's move on to round number uh, uh, 11 next and round number 11 we're actually gonna do the twist and I'll show you how to do that next. So here on round number 11, do you see how it has the, we've been coming up on an angle like this and then it jets across and then it will go then straight up on this side and then it will start building again here. We're going to be on round number 11 here doing this jet across at this point. So we're gonna be changing where we're doing the front and back post double crochets in order to create that and that's coming up next. So let's uh, begin to do round number 11. This is the final round by the way. It, we're gonna start decreasing after this round um, to, for the top of the hat because you're noticing it's getting bigger and bigger. So let's begin. We're gonna chain three, one, two and three. Now this time we're going to do the first five are going to be uh, front post double crochet. So that's kind of unexpected isn't it? So we got first five and this is that jetting across look that we want. So the first five is gonna be uh, front post double crochet and that includes this one that's already in the front post and now the next five are going to be back post double crochet and you're going to continue that same repeat pattern going all the way around. So five front post double crochet, five back post double crochet. The only difference now is that you're just physically, you're not, it's not following up like a straight line like it had been before and that's what's creating the twist look and it's just a visual. It's nothing more than that and that's what makes it quite cool. So you're gonna have five back post double crochets in a row and then switch over to five 
front post double crochets. So all of these back posts then get pulled forward. Okay, so please do that uh, for this round. This is round number 10. So please do this for all of round number 11 and then in number 12 we're gonna start decreasing stitches and then you're gonna notice this is gonna get faster and faster as you carry on for the remainder of the hat. And the final five in this round, round number 11 will be back post double crochets. So we can see the twist action has just started. You really can't notice it too much yet uh, but it will and just uh, stick with it and let's begin to do round number 12. Round number 12 we're going to start decreasing as we make our way to the top of the hat. Once you get the last one done just join it to the uh, beginning front post double crochet just like this. So you can kind of see it just came up on an angle and then just kind of physically stopped and we're gonna be doing the next part in round number 12 next. In round number 12 we're going to begin uh, decreasing stitches. So we're gonna be starting to subtract out stitches every repeat pattern this time. So the, let's chain up three. One, two and three. So the repeat pattern for this is that the first one is gonna be a front post double crochet like this. So we're gonna now start growing it out. Remember how we started off down here where we just had a point and then we got bigger? We're gonna be doing the same thing uh, for this but we're gonna be subtracting out stitches. We're going to skip the next available stitch to you. Okay and then we're gonna go to the second one over and we're going to back post double crochet all the remainder uh, of the repeat pattern. So there will be a total of eight. Let me just count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Yes there's eight. So there's eight back post double crochets in a row. So we just have to skip that one right after the first front post double crochet. Let me just count and make sure. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, and eight. Just like this. Okay and let's begin again. So do you see how this here is a front post double crochet? That's your signal to let you know that you're in the repeat pattern. So the first one is a front post double crochet. You're skipping the next one and going to the second one over and the next eight are going to be back post double crochet. Please do that same repeat pattern all the way around. Let's finish up round number 12 and I'm just going, I came all the way back around and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the beginning of the first front post double crochet. So we're going to uh, continue and we're gonna continue to decrease stitches all the way to the top of the crown of the hat. So let's move on to round number uh, 13 next. So round number 13 we're going to just start off by chaining a three. Now we have skipped a stitch down here and we're not even gonna worry about it so make sure that you're not skipping anything extra that you need to. So in round number 13 we're gonna start off and the first two are gonna be front post double crochets. Okay, just like you see. Then we skip the next one and then the next, uh, all the remainder all the way to the, the repeat pattern over here is going to be back post. So we skip the next one and we go back post double crochet until the repeat starts again. So two, I'm counting, three, four, five and six. So there's six stitches there and then it's the repeat pattern again. So the repeat pattern is the first one is a front post double crochet. So is the next one. Okay so that was a back post now it's a front post. We skip the next one and then go and do the remainder of the repeat pattern of back post double crochet. So please do that all the way around. The remaining six in this particular round, I'm going all the way around is the back post double crochet and then we're just going to join it to the top of the first front post double crochet that we started with. So let's uh, end that uh, round and let's move on to the, to the next one and let's move on to number 14. Number 14 we're still gonna be removing out stitches so watch what we're gonna do. We're gonna chain three, one, two, three and then the first three are gonna be front post double crochet. So one, two and three. Okay get that one right there. That's your third. Okay and now we're going to skip one and then the remainder and there's only gonna be four is going to be back post double crochets before you get to that repeat patterning once again. So that was two, three and four. Ok 
Okay, here's the repeat pattern again. So the first three are gonna be front post double crochet. One, two, and three. We're going to skip the next one and then double crochet into the next, or back post double crochet into the next four. So one, two, three, and four. So continue to do that all the way around. This is round number 14. So finishing up round number 14, I'm getting faster and faster because there's less stitches working uh, in row. The final four will be a back post double crochet. And then we'll just join it to the first front post double crochet at the top. Okay, so let's move on to round number 15. There's only a total of 18 rounds, so we're almost done. You can really kind of see this starting to take place and it's really quite neat. Let's begin round number 15. Let's begin round number 15. We're going to chain up three. In round number 15, the first four are going to be front post double crochets this time. So one, two, three, and four. And then we skip one. Okay, and then back post the, the last two of that repeat. So one and two and then you'll see the front post shows up again. So then the first four will be front post double crochet again. So one, two, three and the next one you've got to pull forward to make it four. Then you skip one and then just back post double crochet in the last two. Continue to do that all the way around. This is number 15. Okay, coming up all the way around on number 15 and the final two are a back post double crochet. And then we just join it to the top of the front post double crochet to start. So we got 15 so we have three more rounds to go and let's move on to round number 16. So for round number 16 it's gonna be slightly different so just watch how we do it. We're gonna chain up three to start and then the first four are going to be front post double crochet. One, two, uh, three and four. Now you would have expected five because we've been kind of just gaining by one but this time it's only four. We're going to skip the next one and it's just one back uh, post double crochet in the final one of the repeat. Okay. So then the next one, here's the repeat again. So it's gonna be only four. So one, two, these are front post double crochets. Two, this is three, and four and then we skip one and then the final one of the repeat pattern is a back post double crochet. Continue to do that all the way around. That's number 16. So finishing up this round we just have one left a back post double crochet and then it repeats again and we just join it to the top of the front post double crochet. Let's move on to round number 17 next and let's begin. Number 17, we're going to chain up three, one, two, and three. And now to keep the patterning consistent, you notice how we were kind of coming up on an angle here. Number 17, we're gonna do the same thing even though there's only two rounds left uh, which includes this one. The first one is a back post double crochet this time around. Let me just do that properly. <laughs> yeah, it happens. You drop a stitch and that's it. So let's try again. So the first one is a back post double crochet. And then the next three are front post double crochet this time. So one, two, and three. So you have a back post double crochet that's there. You're gonna skip that and immediately just jump into the first one here and convert that into a back post double crochet this time. And then the next three are front post double crochet. So that's your repeat pattern. So the first one is a back post and the other three are front post. You skip it and then just keep on. So let me just do that again. So I've just got that done. So you skip the back post, make the next one a back post and the next three are front posts. Please do that all the way around. When you get all the way back around on number 17 you're gonna finish off with the three front posts and then just join to the top of the beginning uh, back post double crochet that you started with. So let's uh, move on to round number 18. This is the final round and then what we have to do then is take the string and then kind of sew it all together shut at the top and that's really quite simple. Let's move on to round number 18. So let's begin round number 18. We're gonna simply chain up 18 and we're gonna skip the first back post double crochet and we're going to uh, do the next two as front post double crochets and they're al they already are front post double crochets so you can see them there. 
you're going to skip the next front post double crochet and you are going to back post double crochet into the next back post double crochet. So here's the repeat pattern. The first two are front post double crochet are going to be a front post double crochet and then you skip the last one and just back post double crochet into the next one. Okay, so here's the repeat pattern. The first two are going to be front post double crochets. You're gonna maintain that. You skip the next one and then it's back post double crochet around the other one. That's back post already. Continue that same fashion all the way around. So continuing in the same fashion all the way around, when you get all the way around, the final two are going to be the front post double crochet. You're gonna skip over and then just join it to the top of the first uh, one over here. Okay, and that was a, a front post double crochet. So you're gonna end up with a hole in the top and what we need to do is leave a very long string. Well, not too long. And we are going to um, sew that shut. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So let's create this and we are going to just yarn over. I've already trimmed the yarn from the yarn ball and I have, I'm gonna pull this tight. So this is the hole that I end up with. So I'm gonna use my darning needle and I'm going to um, put that into the eye of the needle. And what I wanna do is kinda like a clothesline idea is where you just kinda go across the outside stitches. Okay, all the way around. And then at the end what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that string. So I don't wanna pull it all tight yet. <laughs> I kind of enjoy the process. So I like to pull it all at the same time and really pull it shut. Okay, so I'm just going along and I'm gonna go back to the, all the way around to the start. Now this uh, pattern has a pom pom on the top. I'll provide a, a free tutorial available in the article. If you'd like to do that, I won't show it here in the tutorial because I already have that done. So once you have it all the way around, just pull on it and this will pull that all nice and shut at the top. And then what I like to do, other than dropping my, my darning needle, is that I, I like just to make sure I look at the hole and just kind of go diagonally across in one direction kind of don't be scared to pull things apart if you have to and then I just go in the other direction across and just do that a couple of times just to really kind of secure it into position and then I like just to feed it through like it's knotting itself onto it and then what I like to do then is just stick the needle through the hat and into the underside and let me just turn it like this Okay, so it's coming out through the top and what I want to do then is that I just want to secure it and tie, a, uh, tie it into a knot on the underside. Like so. And then I take the loose end that I'm left with and then I just kind of feed it into some fibers like so and then I can just safely trim. So I now just turned it so that I can see the outside of the hat and I noticed some people put a nice single crochet a line along that. It's not required in the pattern but I noticed some people do it. Let's see what it looks like at the seam line. Where is it? Right there. And there's my seam line coming all the way up just like you see it here. And actually it looks really good. It looks really good. Um, and some people do put a single crochet along the bottom in order to stabilize it. Now if you end up with a gap like that I would probably take a darning needle and just kind of uh, just pull it together if you wish. But this is how you create to do the twist hat. It really is a nice hat and uh, really is quite interesting. You can do a pom pom. We do have video tutorials on how to make a homemade pom pom or you can buy a ready made one if you want to and that you can buy ready made ones on yarnspirations.com if you wish as well. So this is how you do the twist and this is a great uh, free hat kind of cabling pattern and until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochet crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and thanks for joining me today. We'll see ya. Bye bye.